Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. Today is the first day on this job site, and this job site is going to be multiple parts within this particular series because we've got the entire backyard, both side yards, and the entire front yard. So this is around the whole house, in other words. First, we'll start back here. We're going to phase this out into multiple pours as well. We're going to get rid of the raised planter beds. We're going to uh, solidify that into one large raised poured in place concrete planter. Bull nose cap, wood grain finish. Then on this back patio area, we're going to do uh, Belgian slate texture, pebble color from the Davis color chart. We'll be using 3000 PSI concrete. Um, I request, re, requested uh, straight cement, no fly ash in the mix. I think it does better with color especially. As I started breaking this out, I found that there was actually two layers of concrete here. What they did initially is they poured a concrete patio that was below the vents because this house is on sits on a raised foundation you can see the vents there on the side of the house so you've got a six inch raised foundation it's probably 18 inch crawl space underneath six inch wide actually it might be eight inch because this is two story so yeah it's probably eight inch wide stem walls but look how thick this concrete is it has these massive footings just randomly out here in the patio no rhyme or reason that i could figure you know at this point but it's been in here a while you know, there may have been a patio cover here and there maybe a door got taken out a slider got thrown in you know a lot of different things happened over the course of this house's lifetime so anyway as I did start breaking this out I noticed that the original this concrete here since they poured over the original patio was actually higher than the seal plate of the house on top of the stem wall. So I knew that I was gonna have to lower this whole backyard down at that point to get below that wood seal. And as I opened this up and started examining the side of the house below the concrete surface, I seen a lot of uh, water damage just because of that fact of the concrete being higher than the uh, wood seal. As you can see there at this end of the house at the bottom of that vent usually underneath the vent you have about you know you have an inch and a half plate underneath that and that's top of concrete that the house sits on so we got to be somewhere in that vicinity rather than where it is currently some of this concrete had wire mesh which is really easy to break out I was fortunate there wasn't any uh, rebar, 3 8 or half inch in there, because that makes it a little more difficult. You can't really snap that kind of uh, reinforcement, but the wire you can just pop, break it right off. This is actually the first, no, this is the second job we used the electric. 29 inch wide buggy and I did go to people's ready again on this side which is formerly known as labor ready and I got a another worker out here which you'll see within one of these videos I'm not sure if it's gonna be this one but um, we ended up getting a female from people's ready and uh, she was a really good worker. She was able to run that electric buggy with no problem at all. So because of that water damage that was getting into underneath the house here, it actually uh, caused the stucco to delaminate off of the foundation and some of the, they had some metal flashing behind that stucco as well. 
and that completely corroded so I had to replace some of that before I put the new concrete in so I'd stockpiled the entire backyard on the driveway because that driveway is coming out anyway within another video and this is just what came out of the back patio now that's a pretty large pile considering it was only about 800 square feet but the thickness of the concrete really made that pile grow Well, I got a replacement for my Johnson laser level, and this is the replacement. I kind of did an upgrade. I got the Dewalt laser level now, as you can see there. Much better unit, a little more expensive, but well worth the cost. I was going to initially use, you see that raised planter, they had pressure treated wood, double stacked two by sixes to get that elevated planter bed. And I was going to reuse those for my form work, but as I started looking down them, they were so bowed and out of shape that I couldn't really use them for foreign lumber. So I just cut them up. I had to trash them. So I'm going to have to bring in some new 2x12s and I'll use 2x12s to form this raised planter area. And uh, what we're going to do is pull it out from the wall so we can do a complete walk around the planter bed and work it from the exterior. And just a little reach over on top. Now on the laser level here, I'm just trying to establish where I'm going to drain all this water because we're pretty much enclosed back here. There's no drainage because we have a wall behind that AC unit. Um, and then going around the other side of the house, it's quite a, quite a long run. So what I'm going to do is break this yard into two directions. Right from the middle of the backyard, I'm going to slope it um, two directions around each side of the house. And then even though we're getting or boxing ourselves in with water drainage behind that AC, I'm going to core through the bottom of that footing and throw a drain in and then go out the front courtyard under the driveway, daylight it back a sidewalk underneath the artificial turf. That little um, multi-quip MQ um, petered out on me on this job have to get a new engine in it I think that's road base is just uh, crushed old concrete so we're gonna reuse it if I had a portable plant crusher plant on site I could have just taken my old concrete ran it through the crusher and then put it back in as a base but um, I didn't have that that particular tool now I just squared out the planner you notice I didn't use a square at all I just three four fived it you might want to run that in slow-mo to get that uh, full absorb that totally The, the only good thing about taking the two layers of concrete out versus one is that we, um, we, we created enough space to get a good amount of base in here. And it also got us down to the level below that uh, wood seal. Now I just squared it up the same way that I did initially for the initial footing dig. And then I squared it up one more time with the lumber. I threw one in parallel with the house and then I th three four five off of that one piece of wood and just swing swung the string line around till it hit and 
this particular raised planter bed it's going to have a wood grain finish so i actually went and got some wood siding um, eight foot long six inch high three quarter inch thick and it has that simulated you know wood grain finish on it it's really for siding houses and stuff i'm going to use that to give me my uh, the look that i want here Notice how we set it in from the walls. That way, when they do their uh, vegetable garden or whatever um, they're growing in here, they can walk around the whole bed and just about reach over and grab everything from the exterior. The overall height of the raised planter bed with the cap is going to be, um, let's see, three, four. About 15 inches above uh, the top of slab. So I got the 2 by 12. You know, that's really all I really want is 12 inches above the concrete, then the 4 inch cap on top of that. But since I wanted a nice straight edge below um, the top of concrete to hit the side of that planter, underpinned it with another 2 by 6. That way when I go to uh, put my expansion felt against the side of the planter, I have something to put it to. I don't have to worry about chipping a footing off or dealing with some protruding chunk of concrete that gets annoying. There, there it is. You can see it a little bit in the corner, the bottom corner of the screen, the uh, siding that I was talking about there. That's what we're going to be lining it with on the outsert. The, in, the interior of the planter, I'm not concerned with because we're going to fill that up with dirt. Everything around this house will be the same color. Pebble from Davis. Integral mixed into the concrete. I'm just screwing these on there. And I'm staggering the joints because those joints will show when the con when this is stripped out. So and I want them to show so it looks like individual planks of wood. So you could even gap them a little bit if you want. And then also on those screws, if you inset those a little bit, which is kind of what I'm doing, I'm insetting them. It gives you the look when you strip it you're gonna it's gonna look like that's where something is holding that wood fastening it there because that's gonna give it a little indentation so you want to line those screws up in other words make them straight all the way across and in the right places so it looks realistic like wood wood where it's fastened I didn't really gap it. I maybe gapped it about an eighth of an inch, you know, horizontally between those layers of the six inch. Just enough for a little bit of concrete to squeeze out and give it that seam look. And, you know, because I did underpin and I do want that f nice, flat, smooth edge going down below the concrete on the exterior I had to um, run another four inch of siding you could you don't have to use siding you could potentially just use anything three-quarter stock because you're not going to see the bottom anyway but you need that the width to continue on down because this yard yard is kind of on a skew here the whole planter bed is is as well so there's no 45s or 90 it's just whatever degree it is it is
here's the porches what we're going to do is pour the the rear side by the ac the raised planter wall and the three landings outside of each back slider door because now we're going to have a step because we lowered everything down now you'll actually need steps before they had about like a eight inch drop off out out, out of these doors and now they're going to have they're only going to have a five inch and we had a lot of scrap lumber laying around so we're just going to use utilize uh, two by fours two by sixes and just build them deep that way when we strip uh, we can pour up against it on the porches we're going to do a sand wash finish and then also on the cap for the raised planter we'll do a sand wash so we kind of have a match on the above grade stuff the above grade so we'll have the sand wash everything down below will just be the stamp everything's going to have the same color though it'll all be pebble but they'll look totally different because of the finish and you can see the original concrete how it went underneath the doors and you can see that stucco was stucco on top of the old porches which were gone by the time I got here because they had poured over everything now I just found some scrap 2x4's you know the most uh, the crookedest ones I could find cut those and put them on the bottom that way if they don't come out they don't come out and I just bury them now you know I got the Owens Corning fiberglass bars but you know if I wanted these kind of bins they'd have to be a custom order you can't take that Owen Corning fiber bar and uh, heat them and bend them on site they have to be actually made that way otherwise they get really weak if you try messing with them on these bins so we're gonna use steel and I'm using half inch steel I have my rebar bender cutter over there and I'm bending them to fit these corners So we'll have two half inch, one top and bottom all the way around. And this is really no different than the house build. If you look at the house right over there, it's going to have the same stem wall. The only difference is it'll still have the two bars, but the footing will be a little bit bigger actually. You'll have a one by one at least underneath the raised stem. In this case, I've only got probably like a 10 by 10 underneath the raised portion now I cut some spreaders then I just wrapped some tie wire over the top and I spaced the steel stakes directly across from one another that way I put the tie wire around the two stakes and the spreader the current when it goes in can't blow the forms out the spreader comes out of course during the pouring process now here's that porch and we're gonna do them all the same we're just gonna go five inches down um, from the existing floor of the house on each one so you have the same feel through each door and this ground was really soft because they, but they put a layer of dirt in between the two concrete patios that was never compacted or anything they just threw it in there poured concrete so I decided to dig holes down on these little uh, landings out the doors I did like post holes I call they're called you can call them earth teeth so I didn't want a drill you could drill into the house for ports like that but in this case since I know what I'm working with it's a stem wall it's only probably six to eight inches wide you don't really want to drill into those so I just anchored it to the ground now there's that Owens Corning 3 8 inch pink bar 
comparable to half inch steel and a lot lighter and easier to work with. And if you lay them out in the hot sun and you don't like wearing gloves, you won't burn your hands on them. Another little ben another little bonus. So there's the form oil going on and this form oil is actually I didn't really make this myself like I typically would from my used motor oil from my truck in this case I actually got some biodegradable oil so it doesn't matter where it lands it's just great for the environment Anyway, that about wraps up part one, but stay tuned for the big boy pours. Have a good one, and talk to you later.